What's up, everybody? My name is John Hammond. We're looking at Pico CTF 2017, and we are on the last challenge in the cryptography category of level one. So this challenge is called Compute RSA. It says RSA encryption or decryption is based on a formula that anyone can find and use as long as they know the values to plug in. So given the encrypted number, this thing, D equals this thing, and N equals this thing, what is the decrypted number? And check out the hint here. It says decrypted equals encrypted raised to the power of D mod N. So if you've never seen RSA before, that's totally okay. It's super duper common in capture the flag competitions in the cybersecurity scene. You'll see it in like computer science stuff, blah, blah, blah. But it is uh, an example of cryptography. It is one of the first public key crypto systems and like an example or method of cryptography. So it is based on math, like pretty much all of cryptography is, uh, and it's a really great example of basic, like example, public key crypto systems. So um, I'm not going to get exactly into all of the cool tidbits or even all of the attacks and crazy cool things we can do with RSA, um, but I do want to showcase how we can solve this challenge and still explain, okay, what is really happening behind the scenes of RSA. They give us all of the actual, like, information that we need in this prompt right here. So all we have to do is literally do the operation when, and we could get the flag just like that. But I do want to explain a little bit of RSA before we dive into doing it for more for real uh, in later videos. So I'm in the key generation portion of the Wikipedia page. Um, and it says at the basics of this is how RSA really works is that there are two original numbers, P and Q, and they are chosen in that they are different prime numbers. So prime numbers in that like there isn't a factor in between it other than one, like three and five and seven, etc. Um, for security purposes, the integers P and Q should be chosen at random and should be similar in magnitude but different in length. Um, you will see a lot of attacks that we'll get into more in RSA, like Wiener's little D attack or using a, like, I think it's multi-prime or something, that, uh, or twin primes, etc., etc. But for now, just press the I believe button for P and Q. N that you'll see is the modulus. And that's the word that you'll hear more often than not. And you'll see N in the public key or one half of the RSA algorithm. And that is the uh, product of P and Q multiplied together. And then we compute, this looks like lambda here uh, as the least common multiple of P and Q or least common multiple of P minus one and Q minus one. Because lambda here is the Carmichael totion function. Um, which is not the Euler's Totian function, apparently. Um, when I first looked at this, I was like, what? I thought it was Euler's Totian. Um, and they explained this a little bit down below. Euler's Totian function is phi, and you'll hear me refer to phi a lot more than usual because it's just, for these prime numbers p and q, the phi will return um, p, um, or the prime number minus one. Um, and that totion is just the count of positive integers up to the number that are relatively prime to that number. Maybe that doesn't make a whole lot of sense when I just say it out loud, but for a prime number, it will just be that prime number minus one. So it, it also has a property in that the product here, when we're using prime numbers again, the phi of n will just be the phi of p multiplied by the phi of q because n is p multiplied by q. So keep that in mind. Now we choose an integer e, which is the exponent that is greater than one and less than that phi or lambda in our case. And the greatest common denominator is one of those. So those are co-prime. E you'll typically see as the common exponent of 0x1001 zero 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 one, or hex um, 1000. 1,000, 10,001, what, one of those numbers. Uh, and that's 65537, I think, in decimal. Um, you'll see that more often, but in this in this problem for Pico CTF, they actually don't give us E or the exponent because we don't need it, because we're just doing the decryption process with D, which is the private key. So D is the exponent modular inverse, so raised to the power of negative 1, all mod uh, lambda N, or phi in whatever we are referring to when we're using, when we are using actual Euler's Totian, and you'll hear me refer to phi more often than not, so I apologize for that. D is the modular multiplicative inverse of E. That is normally, mathematically wise, hard to compute, but we can do it in Python with some cool libraries and modules, so we'll keep that in mind again once we later look at RSA. 
this is a lot of explanation that we don't particularly need to cover for just this task at hand, but I want you to know those basics. So the public key is N and E, the modulus and the exponent. The private key is D. So that should be kept secret. You should not share D. But in this case, the problem does, so all we have to do is do the decryption. P, Q, and phi, or lambda N, in Carmichael's notion function, again, exception here, sorry, disclaimer, those should be kept secret because they can be used to calculate D. Obviously, if you know P and Q, or if you can factor N, then you essentially can figure out phi and you can figure out D because you're normally given E as that is the public key, right? So P and Q are the gates, the, the keys of the golden gate, right? Um, if you can figure out P and Q, if you can factor N, you should be able to solve an RSA problem. Okay, and they give this example of the regular normal E exponent, so cool. Okay, um, now let's jump into this actual problem. Let's do this in Python here. I'm just going to get a terminal open up, and I'm going to use Python because that is typically our weapon for solving CTF challenges. That is our best sword. So we have the encrypted number, this thing. So that, because it's encrypted, we know that that is the ciphertext, right? So that will consider that C for the code, the ciphertext. D, which is our private key we can use to decrypt, and N is that modulus, right? So we'll keep that in mind because we need that now to go through this decryption process. If we scroll down a little bit more in the Wikipedia page, they give us these equations that are the actual procedure for encrypting or decrypting with RSA. And they also give an example, choosing a random P and Q, finding out uh, lambda or phi, whatever you want to consider it as, using an E that meets the criteria for this challenge, determining D, finding the multiplicator, uh, multiplicative inverse, and calculating it with encryption and decryption. So, encryption is taking the original plaintext method, M, the original plaintext message, sorry, uh, raising it to E, the exponent, mod N. So modular arithmetic, that's the secret of our, of our cryptography, keeping that secret sauce in, and we get C, our ciphertext. Now to decrypt C, we have C, the ciphertext, raised to D, the exponent there is the private key. And again, that is mod N. Everything in RSA is mod N or modulus N, you know, the percent sign we've seen before. So we saw that in hash 101, right? That modular arithmetic is what's keeping the secret sauce of cryptography super cool. So we can do that decryption just like that. Um, in Python, you can do that like actual mathematics here typed out with those symbols. So let's say we wanted, okay, here's our encrypted ciphertext uh, raised to the power of D, all mod N. If we put that in parentheses just for safekeeping, you can do it that way, but Python's built-in library and functions and language set is much faster. So we could do that written out longhand, or you can use the pow function, which is built into Python, um, to raise something to the power of something else, right? So in our case, we're taking uh, our ciphertext, and the other argument is the exponent that we want, so D in our case. But it also can take a third optional argument, which is the modulus, which is, okay, m this expression mod something else, so we can say N here. Great. Once I hit enter, that is supposedly our flag, right? And we can assume that that's the right answer because it's it's a lot of leet. <laughs> we can go ahead and submit that. And we win. Okay, we're up 50 points. That's that. That is the simple decryption process in RSA. Now, if I were to do that how I had done before by hand, I wonder if it... These are small numbers, obviously. Once you get to numbers that, like, take up more than half the screen, um, it'll take a lot more time. So that use that POW function when you're doing this for real. Let's try that. C, exponent D, all mod N. Okay, it gets it relatively quickly, but obviously if we had some much more hardcore RSA problem and data to work with, then we would not use that method. Cool. So that's that. That is the basics behind RSA. Probably really hard to understand while I'm just talking about it, and I totally get that. I totally understand. Um, we will be interacting with it in a much more real way once we get to a harder problem to solve, um, or a harder capture the flag problem, where we're going to use a real attack against RSA, or just solve this challenge to begin with, when we're given N, and we have to determine P and Q. Cool. So 
let's move on, and we'll do that in the next video. But before I get that far, I want to give a special shout out to all of my supporters, the people that give me some love on Patreon. Thank you so much. I cannot say it enough. That's why I do this at the end of every video. And this list is getting significantly longer than the last time I think I recorded here. So thank you. Uh, it means the world to me. I'm so, so grateful you're willing to go on this adventure with me. Uh, $1 a month on Patreon will give you an extra shout-out just like this at the end of every video. $5 a month gives you early access to things that I record before I let them be uploaded and released on YouTube because I normally do like a recording bulk and then gradual daily release schedule. Um, thank you. <laughs> if you did like this video, please do like, maybe leave me a comment, maybe subscribe, and check me out on Patreon or my new website, johnhammond.org www.johnhammond.org, like World Wide Web, www.johnhammond.org. I'm trying to get my DNS records right. It's something weird between GoDaddy and DigitalOcean. Whatever. Check it out. Cool. Thanks. See ya.